Hey, it is Cynix again, and I am back on DeviantArt to take my mind off the cold and rainy weather outside. It is March 21st, and this is what is popular on DeviantArt. So, let's jump right in. Looks like the first piece is called Mist, and judging from the thumbnail, I already don't really like it that much. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, just the figure and everything are just kind of jumping out at me and not being that great especially for being the top thing but let's see what we can figure out from looking at this because uh, that's kind of the important thing to do because usually your brain knows what's right or wrong with something even subconsciously so if you just figure out why you don't like the look of a piece or why it's not sitting well with you then that'll help you learn a lot about art so I do like some of the stuff going on here with the ribbing, or I'm sorry, the scarf that's kind of coming in and out of focus. There's some blues brought in. Uh, so that's some good stuff. It goes well against the blue. But this figure, I don't know, there's a lot of anatomy issues jumping off the bat. Uh, the facial anatomy, I don't really, it feels like there's no forehead and kind of, yeah, I don't know. I don't really like this. The, that bright red on the eyes is you don't want to use colors that are that bright on something that's kind of far away um it just kind of looks weird it's off-putting uh the hair is just kind of black and it waves over the scarf stuff which i don't know if that's even correct and like where it should be it just kind of looks it looks more like brush strokes than hair which can be okay but not really in this instance the skin tones are also, you know, he kind of used the same skin tones throughout the whole thing from top to bottom, which I like to say is a bad idea. Usually doesn't help your piece out. It's better if you can try to keep your skin tones going from different color to different color. Uh, but yeah, anatomy, the head's way up here with the long neck, and I don't know, it doesn't flow well. The pose feels a bit weird, and the wings coming out are kind of coming out at an angle. This one's going back, and this one's going... Well, this one's going back, and this one's going away from us, which doesn't really match the pose of the girl that much. And yeah, there's some other things, like this little feather here. It's just, I don't know. It's like... They drew it crisply and then just put a little smudge around it to try and make it look like it's maybe blurry, but that doesn't really work. It just looks like it's sharp with some black smudging around it. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry, I touched the microphone. Anyway, yeah. So I'm just not feeling that one, I'm sorry. Sometimes art just doesn't feel good to you. So let's move right along. This is a traditional piece called Flow X Were, or I guess their name's Flower. The story of a tragic boy who's slowly turning into a sheet of wallpaper, I guess. I don't really know what's going on with the character. Kind of got this weird arm thing. I guess it's on purpose. I don't really understand it. Doesn't really make much sense to me, but that's okay. I'll, I'm willing to say maybe it is a boy that's turning into a sheet of wallpaper and that would be, I'd be pretty entertaining. So let's see what we can figure out here. There's some good stuff going on with the skin colors at least. They're using a lot of saturated stuff. You can see in the fingers or the knuckles have that uh, redness and stuff like that. Uh, this character, it's okay that if you're going to block out large sections with just pure black, like that can work as a graphical style. But I feel like the character has to be kind of dynamic and you really have to rely on your outline. And as you can see the outline here, the shoulder just comes out really flat, which is awkward and it's really wide too. You can kind of see like his whole kind of frame is really wide. With the little hand, or the kind of little face too. And so there's just some kind of weird stuff going on with that. I think the girl looks a lot better just because it looks like she's interacting with him a lot more than he's interacting with her. You can see this hand's kind of awkwardly placed here, like they wanted to place the hand, like kind of make it look like he's stroking her hair or something, but it looks just a little off. Um, so yeah, there's some issues with that. Her pose is a bit better. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the background. It's kind of got this wire stuff. I guess it's okay. I'll let it go. It's it's something. It's kind of got a tangled wire. It creates a certain vibe of chaotic confusion. I don't know what they're going for. Um, with the hair, I feel like they should have tried to do this anime hair in bigger clumps. You can see it gets a bit like thin little strands coming off and they're all kind of the same length. And that kind of looks a bit weird. It kind of points out that this side's a bit wider and whatnot. Anyway, so yeah, some stuff like that. But let's move on. I'm trying to do this faster this week. Uh, so here we go. We got a little Pokemon with a boy. So the colors are nice. I like the palette. It's got a nice soft uh, coloring style. It's digital, but they got some nice textures going on. Uh, there's an unfortunate tangent going on with this little Pikachu's leg, and that it kind of flows, the tangent flows right into the shirt. Uh, what's that? I don't know. The sleeve, the end of the sleeve. I don't know what the name is for that. I guess it could be the, called the sleeve cuff. But yeah, that's kind of unfortunate because it's the same color in the tangents. You always got to watch out for tangents. Not that there's anything horribly wrong and stuff like that can happen in real life and whatnot, tangents. It's just, you know, when you're doing illustration, you want to watch out for them. Because you'll figure them out when you actually look at the piece. You're like, hey, that's not a leg, that's a shirt. But, you know, it just never hurts to avoid those tangents. Uh, so I really like the Pokemon. The Pokemon's cute. It looks happy. It's nice. It's colored nicely, and it's just simple, and it looks cute. It looks happy. This, uh, this hair, I feel like it shouldn't have gone in so much right here. It's kind of a weirdly short little piece here. You kind of want to keep things flowing like in a certain direction. Like If it's big, it'll get smaller gradually, but when you jump in a lot like that, then jump back out. Uh, if you just look at that part of the hair, it kind of looks a bit awkward. So, and it also, it, this hair is way shorter on this side. So it looks like he just stuck his head in a weed whacker or something. I don't know. The hair is pretty chaotic and in parts and really even in others, which is kind of like how kids cut their hair. <laughs> um, like, oh no, little Billy found the scissors again. But anyway, let's move along. There's some good stuff going on there. I like the little flakes of white tail. Ooh, this already looks pretty. So we got some natural photography. Once again, it's framed nicely with all these beautiful reds and colors and the yellow sky. Everything really has a nice depth to it where it goes back and gets more, less saturated and all that good stuff. And the water looks great with its reflections. So I don't really have anything bad to say about this piece. It's got some nice foreground blurring on this branch here. So a, a lot of depth, which is just great to see in photography. And I like the scenery. I like what it's showing me. I want to go to this place. It is good natural photography. I enjoy it. So yeah. Oh, OK. It says this is photojournalism. I don't know what that means, if I'm supposed to read this. Oh, apparently there's a long thing. OK, but it's just the song by Kate Nash. So I'm not going to read the whole thing. But yeah, nice picture. Oh, next. I'm already seeing a problem with the whole weekly series. Is it seems like everyone keeps favoriting the same artists every week. And I keep having to talk about the same people over and over again. Which is kind of disappointing, but oh well. We'll go with it. So we got another cosplay photography in an amazing setting once again. I think it's the same setting, but different area. And the shot is framed really nicely with this crazy ornate boat. Like, wow, this boat is insane. It's like they're on a set of a movie or something. So there's a lot of good depth in this picture with the background and the foreground. Um, This guy, he still looks weird to me. I, I'm getting kind of that Michael Jackson vibe. Just Maybe it's the glove and the like weird military suit and the... It's definitely the face though in the hair. I don't know. That's kind of distracting me. The girl's interesting. I like her. She looks really unhappy. But I, you kind of get the vibe that that's the character she's going for. 
this guy's just kind of weird. I don't know. He creeps me out a little bit. Um, and you got this weird big black signature thing going on, which is okay. Kind of makes that very like this is the cover for your J Rock album. That's kind of the vibe that gives off. So maybe that's what you're going for. It looks all right. I don't mind it. And next piece, we got another one by someone we've seen before. Omar Dogen. Yep. Once again, I feel like the same exact crit um, as the last time we saw his stuff. It's mainly just with the skin tones. The skin tones feel a bit weird. Let me see if I can zoom in here. Yeah, especially on these shoulders and things. They're very kind of dodge and burn feeling, and you, I really don't like when people just do dodge and burn stuff. Like, it has a very airbrushed, slow gradient feeling, and it just isn't that interesting to look at up close. These shoulders, um, and the clothes never seem to fit quite right, or I don't like the way they're playing with the body. As you can see here, that it's kind of the straight line, and the line here doesn't show any form. It doesn't show the form. It looks like they're trying to show some side boob here, but the line is just perfectly straight and flows right back. It doesn't really show any form at all. I really don't like how that's interacting with the body. But once again, he does some good stuff with textures and the metals and whatnot. I like his. He does some cool stuff with clothing and whatnot. It's just those skin tones. Oh. Like, there's some good stuff going on with the nose, and he seems like he's got some good rendering ideas. It's just, he's he's kind of pigeonholing himself with the skin tone. And once again, the neck's kind of flat and wide. Like, imagine this piece, imagine the anatomy that goes on if this collar wasn't here. It would just be this giant, flat, wide neck that goes pretty long, actually. And pretty kind of awkward, especially for this pose where the head's tilted downward. Kind of downward and to the side, but the, the neck just feels a bit long. So, let's move right along. Once again, we have something of a comic. Web comic. We've seen this guy a few times now. Oops, I scrolled down too much and it doesn't want to scroll up. Okay, I will just read it because that is about all I can do for this guy's stuff. Just to, just to keep the continuity going here. <coughs> let's see, what do we got? Why are you always so angry in your comics? Because comedy comes from conflict? Could you do a comic where you're happy? I can try, but it might be boring. Huh. Hey. <laughs> um, it's, I don't know, it's slightly amusing. There's some kind of awkward stuff going on, which maybe tells more about him. <laughs> He seems really frightened in this panel, and I don't know why. It's just this guy kind of being, like, asking... He's asking politely. His his body language is kind of aggressive, but still, I don't think you need to be this terrified. I can try. So, um... Yeah, I mean, it's... It's okay. I... Uh, Comedy comes from conflict. I disagree there. You know what the best thing I've heard about comedy is? Is that it usually comes from the basic of com or I've heard a lot of people say different ideas, but one idea for the basis of comedy is that it comes from making someone make an assumption about something and then uh, breaking that assumption. So this doesn't really do that, but that's okay. I mean, there's different kinds of comedy. But I found that that's a very good kind of rule to go by when you're trying to be funny. You want people to build an assumption in their head, and then you want to break that assumption, because that's when people seem to find the most comedy. Anyway, fly me to the moon. So, it looks like we have something from the... Ooh, what was it called? The Lunar Perigee? Perigee? I don't know. There was a kind of event last night where the moon was extra big. So it looks like someone took a photograph of that, and there's the moon looks really crisp and nice. And there's a little plane, so they capture that little plane flying off into it. Um, it's okay for like an interesting kind of snippet of this is more like a Twitter photo or something. But let me go back here to show you better more what I'm talking about. If you just look at this, look at the composition here. It's just a circle, 
against a black sky. There's nothing in the sky. And it, the composition is kind of boring. I don't know. It doesn't really do anything. Because it's just this simple circle and black. And it's very just basic. So compositionally, it's I just don't like it that much. But, you know, that's okay. So, let's just do a few more. White Chaos. We have a horse? No. Okay, apparently this is someone's persona. As you can see, I'm a unicorn with two horns. They, we call that a bicorn. I wonder if they do call it a bicorn. Oh man, that'd be awesome. Oh no, apparently they just called a two corn. There is a name and it's two corn. I like bicorn better, but that's okay. Um, so I I don't mind the background so much. There's some interesting stuff going on with the brushes and the things. Uh, the ho I don't like this tangent here. It kind of feels like everything's right at the edge of this background you've established, and you, the face kind of gets lost and whatnot. And I'll be honest, like uh, I'm no expert on horse anatomy, but this horse anatomy just doesn't look that great. As you can see, there's a lot of things that are flat, and it just doesn't show the dynamics of like you know what a horse is that well. This looks very flat. Maybe like, see the thing is we're used to seeing people and we can tell when human anatomy is off, but we usually kind of let animal anatomy slide a lot just because, you know, we're not as familiar with it. If a horse saw this, they'd probably like freak out like, what is, what is going on here? What's wrong with their leg? What is wrong with that? But anyway, yeah, I don't like this tangent stuff going on. It feels like everything's fighting with the edge of these brush strokes and, you know, this hair effect is just kind of not that great in the black and white. It's, I don't really like that and whatnot. It's kind of weird. So yeah, enough of your bicorn. Eh. Okay, this is China. I think we've seen something by this person before too, that nighttime shot. Once again, this person is doing a lot for black and white photography on uh, architectural settings. It's a solid piece. I guess it would look okay if it was framed, maybe matted, put on your wall. It's kind of very, very safe, very kind of nice to look at. Doesn't really do anything amazing one way or the other. It's nice to look at though. So that, I guess that's what they're going for. It's just kind of solid photography. And I really like the black and white, um, what they've managed to do with black and white. I'm not gonna say I like black and white, but I like what they've managed to do with it. Yeah, there's some nice stuff. Nice details going on. So it's pretty to look at. Anyway. Ooh, am I going to make it under 20 minutes? I don't think I am. I think I'm running out of time. Uh, so we have an anime here. It looks kind of like a scene from an anime. You know, that kind of vibe with the framing and composition. But it's nice looking. Um, I like that there's a different skin tone for the fingers. You can see it's darker. It's more purpley. So that's always good. It makes the fingers kind of flow better with the rest of the piece. If you can imagine if they were the exact same color as the skin tones here, they would just kind of look a bit unnatural, but they look better here. Um, apparently this guy's crying. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, but they're crying apparently, or there's water welling up. I don't know. Maybe they're really sad because their chin is stuck in their turtleneck. Yeah, I don't know why the chin's in the turtle. Like, that's a bit weird. That doesn't look quite right. <laughs> I don't think your chin should be in your turtle. Like, it's just kind of, once again, weird stuff with clothes and people. I don't know what all this blue stuff is either. It's like, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'll let that go, though, because it's anime. Because <laughs> it's an anime, and that's what they do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like this. It's it's nice looking, you know. The only major thing is this, you know, chin issue. Chin turtleneck issue. But, you know, there's some nice stuff going on. I mean, it looks fine overall. Look, the thumbnail looks okay. Alright, did I make it? It's 20 minutes. And, oh no, we have the stamp. And it's not even loading. 
God, it's just a stamp. How long can it take? Wow, is this the first time we've had a stamp? I am so sad and happy that this is at the end because, oh man, I'm sad because this was going to be 20 minutes and now we have a stamp. And you know stamps just require like so much time to talk about because they're so complex and amazing. It's look at all this stuff. See, the funny thing about a stamp is it's actually usually more about the actual description of what's going on because the stamp usually doesn't say much. It's like some vague thing like follow your own policies, deviant art. And then what, they just want you to read the comments and the, holy crap, there's a lot of like links and complicated stuff. Apparently though, I think I looked at this earlier. This is about work safe stuff and nudity and child stuff and cherubs and little kids naked and what's allowed on DeviantArt and what isn't allowed on DeviantArt. Ooh, it's making me choke. Um, but yeah, wow, there's a lot of stamp groups too. You know what the thing is? I'm, I'm gonna say this. I feel like DeviantArt is still a private website you know it is not a public it is not socially owned it is not government run this is a private site it literally does not matter what they do they do not have to follow their own rules they do not have to follow any rules except you know basic federal rules but they do not have to draw the line anywhere that they feel uncomfortable they could do whatever they want. They could contradict themselves nonstop. And, you know, there's kind of an argument here that once something gets big enough, like DeviantArt is, that it belongs to the people, that it becomes a public thing. And that is a very dangerous kind of point of view to have. And if you've seen a movie like The Art of the Steel, which is a very good movie, you can watch it on Netflix streaming, it kind of talks about that subject and it's about art it's about someone's art collection and how the state decided that their art collection was so publicly important that there were so many publicly important pieces of, of art in it that they basically just took it they stole it from them and they said what do you like this is too important for one person to own so we are going to take it and put it in the museum and you know it was a privately owned privately owned art collection but you know, that's just kind of the risk you take when you kind of want to make things publicly owned. Like, you want to feel like something so important that everyone should own it, but they shouldn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, that that's just not true. It's This is DeviantArt. They can do whatever the hell they want. You know, that's just the way things should be. Let them, let them, let them make you mad and contradict themselves and be annoying and break their own rules. You know, it's their site, whatever. Who cares? get mad about it and write angry comments and have interesting debates feel free to get mad at this what I'm saying right now and tell me all about it that's fine I like having angry debates at least these provide lots and lots of fun comments where you can sit back eat your popcorn and enjoy the bickering of people as they try to discuss the ins and outs of censorship and blah 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 Okay, and that made me go over 20 minutes, but whatever. I said 20 minutes are bust, and I lied. I lied. We're busting, and I'm busting all over this. I'm busting all over YouTube. So, anyway, that is it for now, and I will be back before the next episode with a tutorial on painting faces, and that will be fun. I hope it will be good. Alright, see ya.